Hi there. Today is Tuesday, the 5th of April, 2022. This is Medusa Was Framed, and my name is Joyce. And today I am going to share with you a little bit about yet another poignant, bloody, historical place here in my mysterious and magnificent city that I live, St. Augustine. And this place is known as Fort Mose. Officially, Gracia de Santa Teresa de Mose, the sanctified grace of Teresa. So this place is outside of the city proper, outside of old city, St. Augustine. It's not something that you would normally see on the red trolley tour or any of the traditional tours of the old city around the fort. But fort, it was nonetheless just a bit north, up the way, up the Matanzas River, where the Talamoto River and the Matanzas River meet and kind of make a wonderfully fabulous marshy, swampy area that is ever changing and ever fertile. Let's see if I can back this up to the first photo. That's where we're going to start. This is obviously uh, a reproduced image. Um, what is believed to have been the original location of Fort Mose before the British fire and after the British fire are both now underwater. And you will see, I will show later in the slideshow, a Google Earth image where you can very clearly see two of the ramparts. Very unnatural 90 degree fortification lines in the middle of the salt marsh. But so what happened was, during the times of all the plantations in early colonial America, when various Europeans and British were coming to this land and buying large swaths of land and making wealth, growing rice and cotton and indigo and various other things um, off the backs of indentured servants and slaves. It was a very different culture in, say, the Carolinas, which were primarily under British control um, and operated by British landowners, versus, which was then La Florida, which was under Spanish control. Um, the Spanish had a different idea about slaves and indentured servants. Uh, it is suggested that the influence of their Moorish application, uh, Moorish for some 700 years, darker skinned people than they obviously, um, had an impact on their idea of what a slave was. So history shows us that people of darker skin, whether they were the indigenous or they were folks brought over from Africa and such, um, weren't necessarily treated as less than human or slaves simply because they had darker skin or certain features. And Florida became a destination 
for the Underground Railroad and a lot of slaves working those plantations up in Georgia and the Carolinas. They headed this way. They headed down toward Florida. Specifically, they headed to St. Augustine. So the dates here, as I read them, are that the first freedom seekers from the occupations of the Carolinas, specifically the manipulation from Oglethorpe. Oglethorpe, famous for being the man who supposedly designed Old Town Savannah, wretched, wretched Oglethorpe. Anyway, folks from up there, dark-skinned slaves, be they black or indigenous, whatever, were supposed to have come down to St. Augustine in the 1680s, and by 1738, there were over a hundred escaped slaves who had accomplished their asylum successfully in the city of St. Augustine. The Spanish governor of St. Augustine at the time was, and I'll probably say this wrong, Manuel de Montano. He offered a fortified town to this group of folks so they could set up their own community. And that piece of land was called Gracia Real de Santa Teresa de Mose, which we now refer to as Fort Mose. In 1740, that wretched Oglethorpe came on down to Florida and attacked Fort Mose. This, we can believe, is an illustration of that time, right? The residents that were well over 100 at that point sought refuge in the walled city of St. Augustine. But a couple weeks later, led by a self proclaimed militia leader of the freed slaves, Francisco Menendez. They headed back and attacked the fort and the British that were there and took it back. The fort was burned, the fortification was burned, that being Fort Mose I. And and then a second Fort Mose was built that they lived in happily until 1763, when Spain ceded all of what was Florida at the time, which went up into Georgia and Southern South Carolina, back to England. This would have meant that these folks who had escaped the British slave abuse would once again fall into the category of slaves under British rule. So they left Florida and Fort Mose and uh, escaped to British Cuba where they were safe. Um, all of these various escaped slaves were given the option to live here in Fort Mose as long as they were willing to convert to Catholicism and support Spain and Florida if the rise ever, the cause ever arose. So those were the conditions. So after they left Fort Mose, everything just fell into ruin and it's in the middle of a marsh. It's still very marshy out there. 
And um, it just all was overgrown and swallowed up by the marsh. It wasn't until there was an archaeological expedition going on around there, around the land there, in 1986, and folks found evidence of a considerable culture being there, and the unearthing began. This is another representation of Fort Mose. This is an interesting one. It looks like a lot of the renditions that I've seen of um, star forts. There are several star forts in Florida and heading up into Georgia and up into the Carolinas. Actually, there are star forts all the way up into Canada, but I'm just speaking of the ones here in the South. Um, this one reminds me of the current drawings of and what Fort Caroline in Jacksonville looks like right now. Obviously, the river has taken out some of the original fortification here. And what you're seeing is instead of the coquina, which is what all this would have been, the shell limestone that would have been uh, mined um, either from the Matanzas River or across the Matanzas River at the King Quarries on Anastasia Island is just the bulwark of um, logs and things, which is how the current remains of Fort Caroline look. So this is an early map. Um, I didn't have a date on this, but this one gives you a sense of things. This is the original walled city of St. Augustine. That's our star fort, Castillo San Marcos. That's our second star that does not show up on every map at the time, but I can tell you this is the old city wall. So this is what we now call Orange Street. This is what we now call um, Sevilla, Cordova, and San Salvador. Those are the names of the streets now. This is the seawall. And at the foot of San Salvador and the Matanzas River, there was another star. What sits here now is the St. Francis Barracks, which is one of the Florida arms of the Florida National Guard. Uh, initially, when the Spanish were here, it was a... Um, uh, a nunnery, a Catholic um, nunnery, and uh, there was a hospital there. Um, and then it became a military place. And it now has right on the edge here, right at the corner of, well, the road here um, that goes along the water is called Marine. So Marine and San Salvador currently at that corner there is an old cemetery that has um, Civil War and World War I uh, army dead and a very interesting memorial that I've done a couple of videos on that includes uh, an obelisk and three pyramids. And the three pyramids are on the same latitude as those in Giza. So that's another story. But anyway, I digress. So this is the old walled city, the original walled city of St. Augustine. That's where the cathedral is, the Star Fort. This road, um, this what they're calling Indian Town. This is what now is the part of town that's called Uptown. But this is also where, if you come here, you will find, um, the Fountain of Youth Memorial, where the Timaquin burial grounds are. And um, Nombre de Dios, the original mission area, and um, Our Lady of La Leche National Monument, along with the Great Cross, the tallest freestanding cross in the United States. It's 203 feet tall, I believe. At the time, this was Indian Town, where the Timaquin 
we're allowed to live. If you continue this away, you end up at Fort Mosaic. And you see here, um, it was referred to as the Negro Fort. So the Matanzas River, the Tolomata River. It doesn't look like this now. It's much marshier than this now. But this is just a, um, an original hand-drawn map. Um, for the Tartarian people, you will notice that we had one, two, three stars in the colonial days. Actually, if we go down the river to where it meets the Atlantic Ocean, we would have come to yet another fortification, which is now known as Fort Matanzas, which was not a star, but uh, had a very interesting shape nonetheless. Ah, uh, Tartaria. Okay, so I took this photo. There are several photos in here that are a combination of photos that I've taken and things that I've hacked from the internet. But um, this is one of the two walkways from the land where the museum is with artifacts and old maps and things like the first photo I showed um, that are uh, reconstructions and old paintings and whatnot of Fort Mose. <clears throat> this is one of the walkways out to the marsh, out here at the end of the walkway. There are, there's information about the wildlife that's in the marshland, but also about the location of the original two Mo Fort Mose's. And actually this right here, out there in the middle of the marsh, out there in the snakes and the gators is, what is believed to have been the original place. One of them, there were two. It's a very beautiful place, lovely for just nature walks. Um, and I just happened to be there when there were things blooming. Things are allowed to be in their natural state which is something that I certainly welcome. This is just part of the walkway. Actually, it's off the walkway, but you see it's easier to traverse. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Just right next to the marsh, you can really see how lush Florida is and what a magnificent place it would have been for these people who and suffered such horrible lives. Um, Fort Mose currently, besides having a museum, is also um, a site of a lot of reenactments. Reenactments are very, very, very popular around here. Um, they fire cannons at uh, the Fountain of Youth every day, twice a day. And uh, because of it being the original destination of all the underground railroads, it's very significant in the historically black community for uh, a place of um, an important place in their history. It was part of the Gullah Geechee corridor as well. So the slaves that were up in the Carolinas, in the islands up there, um, they, when they were able to escape, came down to Fort Mose. Uh, eventually, after slavery was abolished, they often, most of them went back to their original habitations. And now, you know, we have the Gullah colonies up there. Um, but uh, certainly a part of, of that part of slavery tradition, the folks that came from Angola and 
Central Africa that we now call Gullah Geechee. And uh, yeah, interesting. Um, believed that Gullah being derived from an Angola word might indicate that these folks were from Angola. Geechee, again, could be derived from another Central African country. But also, when the Spanish arrived in what is now North Carolina, they referred to the indigenous people that were there, being the Timaquin and Seminole, as uh, Gual, G-U-A-L-E, Gual. I probably said that wrong. Um, so not sure about where that comes from. I'm sure if you know someone in that community, they will give you a much better answer about why it's called that than I did. But anyway, there are these wonderful historical informational plaques all along the driveway. This is letting us know about when they left Fort Mose and why Florida was ceded to England in 1763. And so, those folks left for Cuba, where they would be safe in, again, a Spanish colony. This is really interesting. Um, as of 1764, this denotes all of the Black residents, so escaped, asylumed slaves, Black slaves. Um, in living in St. Augustine at the time, which again was this walled city. And uh, you don't see the star here. I just find that really, really interesting. Why don't they consistently talk about the star? Where's the star? So Fort Mose II was the, the fort that was built after the fire that consumed the first one when the black freedmen snuck back in the night to take Fort Mose back from Oglethorpe's men. So this speaks about that and various artifacts that were found. That speaks of the battle coming in on the ocean here. If they turned left, they would have come to the city of St. Augustine in the Starfort. If they turned right, they would have gone up toward Fort Mose. They knew they couldn't attack St. Augustine. We had a massive Starfort and a completely walled and moated city. So they hit Port Mose. So the first occupation, we talked about that, the runaway slaves from the Carolinas and the building of Port Mose for these folks, as long as they were willing to fight for Catholicism and Spain. In 1693, Spain's King Charles proclaimed that any English slave who reached Spanish Florida would be granted freedom upon their converting to Catholicism. So again, we have this very important time in the Underground Railroad and freedom of folks. This is just a close up of that, talking about Spanish slavery and how it was so different from 
British slavery. It had nothing to do with the color of your skin or your race. As we know, things were not good for any slave, whether they were African or from another country under the British. So well we know a little bit about that very miserable time and an interesting piece about where some of these folks would have come from, believing that the ancestry was West and Central Africa. Okay, this is the historical marker right there. I'll let you read that. And there's more on the other side. So just a little point of reference. This all happened before the Civil War, right? Um, Florida being this very old place historically by American standards. Ponce de Leon supposedly set his foot down here. Actually, specifically more evidence is proving that he set his foot down on what we now call Anastasia Island, which is not St. Augustine proper. It's the barrier island between the Matanzas River and the ocean. It's on the ocean, but that's okay. Ponce got here in 1513 and everything is Ponce de Leon, this or that. Um, Menendez de Avila, oh God, what a nasty man he was. Came here in 1565 to convert all the indigenous people to Catholicism and or wipe them off the map. And he did a pretty good job of that. Um, the Castillo San Marcos, our big star fort was completed in 1696. And the other fort, Fort Matanzas, which is near the mouth of the Matanzas River and the Atlantic Ocean was completed in 1742. Civil War was from 1861 to 1865, and of course in 1865, slavery was abolished. We're talking about a period of time from 1738 to about the early 1800s here on this land and parts of the land that are now underwater. This is another part of that walkway that I showed you earlier, walking over the marsh into the woodland part. Some of the marsh, beautiful, beautiful place. Lots of wildlife. Beautiful, restful place, ever-changing, so rich, full of spirits. If you're a sensitive person and you come here, you will feel quite a bit, you know, history is the story we're told. The land doesn't lie. And when you have an area like this that is ever changing because it's salt marsh, then you're talking about how the water doesn't lie. Just beautiful, 
just beautiful. So here we're at the end of that walkway that I showed you before. So you are here. That's where I'm standing as I take this photo. And you're looking out at what was Fort Mose 1 and Fort Mose 2. Fort Mose 1, Fort Mose 2. More of that walkway. Magnificent. Look at that. Look at that. This is when you're coming in or leaving. This is uh, the mark to let you know where the turn to Fort Mose is. It's not a big placard letting you know that that's where the street is. It's literally the first street north of the official city limits of the city of St. Augustine, which on both sides of US 1 is this reinforcement and the statue of who? Yes, Ponce de Leon. Who else would it be? version of the photo I showed earlier. You are here being on uh, that walkway. You see how you can see, I don't have a date on this, but this is obviously a Google Earth type of image. You can see something there. Kansha. Yeah, there's a good bit to be seen. You can go on Google Earth right now. I don't know when the current Google Earth images were taken, but you can go on Google Earth right now and you can see where one of the forts was. This is inside the museum there. I think it's like three or four dollars to get in. And uh, we're giving you an idea of what the fortification looked like, right? We've got that star bastion design. We're to believe that they were the simple um, thatched roofs, simple wooden structures. There was plentiful wood in the area as there is now. These being, uh, people that were indigenous, uh, either here indigenous or African um, and perhaps living in a, a more sustainable way on the land. So that uh, these simple habitations were suitable for them. I don't know if that's the concept of a noble savage or just practicality, I mean, if I had been forced into slavery and then all of a sudden I was free, I don't think I would care how I lived. I think I'd be happy to live in a cave. So anyway. And a model. model of what they think it was, the church, a bell, and everyone living inside a secured environment. So there are two walkways that take you out to the marsh. This is the second one. It also has a boat dock. What's nice about this one is it really allows you to get up and close to that water. So this being the remains of one of the forts. 
It's so interesting to me to consider how much the landscape has changed. And because this land was not terraformed in any way, um, the city walls uh, were not reinforced with coquina in any way. Nature was allowed to run its course and claim land as it should. The river claiming what it needs to claim. Um, I like that. I think we do an awful lot of damage. Anyway, I really like going to Fort Mose. There's another map. Um, this one shows all four stars. So we have Fort Mose, Castillo San Marcos, the small star that stood on the southern point of the city of St. Augustine. And not a star, but Fort Matanzas, which I believe was originally called uh, Fort Piccolo. Uh, Fort Matanzas is still standing. This is not what it looks like. But when this map was drawn, I guess that's what they thought it looked like. This, by the way, is Anastasia Island. The Atlantic Ocean is here. So when people say, you know, they set foot here, they set foot there. Um, Ponce de Leon was believed to have actually set foot over here on Anastasia Island. And also over here, um, I don't know if it's on this map. But there's somebody's landing place. I can't read that. Uh, over here um, were the big coquina quarries where all of the coquina was mined to build a fort, build many of the structures in the city the reinforced wall and the city gates itself. It would have been where the coquina most likely was quarried for Fort Mose. Uh, the coquina for Fort Piccolo, uh, Fort Matanzas um, is believed to have been actually quarried further south on the Matanzas River. And interestingly enough, where those quarries were, were not a river then. Um, it's only, it's covered in water now because the Army Corps of Engineers during all of that WPA stuff during the depression, uh, like building dams, they, they flooded an area to create a more expansive waterway being the intercoastal waterway. So at the bottom of the Matanzas River in the area of Flagler Beach up to about Crescent City, there are huge swaths of quarried coquina, obviously cut 90 degree angles of coquina, old quarries in the middle of the river. Uh, they're underground, not underground, they're underwater. You can see them on Google Earth. I did a video about that. Um, but um, the water is very deep there, at least 30 feet, perhaps deeper. But what's left of the quarries remain. Um, they also, that also would have been used to build all the buildings on all the plantations in Flagler County, and there were many. There were actually 16 noted coquina quarries in and around St. Augustine during the colonial time when the building was going on. Um, you can see that there were several in what we call the Flagler Beach area, Flagler County. Um, yeah, just a little more ephemeral nonsense. But anyway, so yeah, so our, from the Tartarian standpoint, we have one, two, three, Four fortifications, let us not dismiss the church and the buildings. Well, we won't go down that road here. Anyway, oh, 1740, okay. 1740, so in 1740, we still had that second star 
but it's gone now. 1740 is when Oglethorpe's men came down and attacked Fort Mose and the residents, the freed slaves and whatnot took refuge here and then went back and burned it all down to get rid of them. So anyway, more relativity. Another map of the same thing. Seems like this guy copied the other guy for the most part. Another drawing of what it was believed to have looked like. You know, I just, I find this amusing. I, you know, I do a lot of research on star fort remains and um, here, this is all coquina. And clearly the river and the marsh have claimed pieces of the fort, <laughs> clearly. But rip wrapping was done. You see, Coquina was brought in to uh, terraform that and secure it so no more would be taken. And then that would have been Coquina and big logs. But why, why I want to know, why do you show that as being the way it was? That would not have been the way it was when they lived there. That's completely unsecured. I don't understand this stuff. It doesn't make any sense. Fort Caroline is per portrayed the same way. The original Fort Caroline was two thirds more fort than exists now on the St. John's River in St. Augustine. Two thirds of it have been reclaimed by the marsh and the St. John's River. And yet people make these renditions of what it would have looked like. Well, I guess this is what it looked like when somebody found it and painted the picture, but that's just ridiculous. I mean, ridiculous. Nonetheless, history is the story we're, we're told, right? Not necessarily the truth. So, this is a, a drawing of all the plantations that were in the northeastern portion of Florida between now what we would call northern Volusia County and up into the St. Augustine area. And uh, Coquina would have been quarried out of the Matanzas River for all of these plantations. Plantations, by the way, that were burned down in 1865 when the indigenous folks that uh, are referred to as the tribe of the Seminoles came back from where they had agreed to go and live in peace and give up this land had been betrayed more than once by the American government, they came back and they burned all these plantations down. Anyway, that's another story. But why I included this photo in this is because this is the Atlantic Ocean. This is what we now call the Halifax River. And then you see it kind of turns into a creek and is dry and continues to just be creeks and dry. And then the Matanzas River. Well, the Matanzas River now goes all the way through um, part of the intercoastal waterway, which is a deep water channel running parallel to the Atlantic Ocean from Halifax in Canada all the way down to the Florida Keys. At the time of this drawing, this was not river. And it is in this area where the coquina quarries that are now 
sitting at the bottom of the Matanzas River are. So just interesting. Coquina built St. Augustine and much of the coastal south. Anyway, how civilized people, as it were, come in and drastically change nature to suit their needs. This was all dredged and filled in to create a waterway for commerce. And at the bottom of it is proof of it being considerable land at the time with quarries of Coquina. That's silly drawing. This is a Google Earth snap that I just took the other day. And um, there are the coordinates. If you want to go check that out yourself. 4 Mose, but we're out here in the marsh. Do you see it yet? Do you see it? Do you see angles that nature would not create? Do you see it? Hmm. Out in the middle of the salt marsh. So that is my Last slide today, Fort Mose, a very, very, very important place, not only in St. Augustine's history, these people helped defend what was then Spanish St. Augustine, but uh, kept it standing. Very important to the culture of these folks that lived here the indigenous and well, the indigenous of this land and the indigenous of the African lands as well, or the Caribbean. And um, yeah, more slaughter turned into tourism. The uh, whole story behind St. Augustine, slaughter turned into tourism. I thank you for hanging out with me today. There is a great deal of information that you can find about Fort Mose on um, DuckDuckGo. There's a lot out there. And yeah, if you come to St. Augustine or if you come to Jacksonville, talking about probably an hour away, depending on where in Jacksonville you visit. If you're in St. Augustine, it's a 10, 15 minute ride from Old Town. Um, just north on Ponce de Leon Boulevard, which is US 1. And uh, it's a, a lovely day. There's nothing to buy at Fort Mose. Um, it's just a lovely park with a great deal of history. And, uh, you know, you can stop and get a couple of sandwiches and come and have a beautiful day. There was also an open area with uh, very old oaks where the reenactments occur, but it, it's beautiful and uh, a part of history that a lot of people don't understand so or hear about. So thank you so much for joining me today and I'll see you next time. <laughs>